Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we have a highly successful trial lawyer based in Los Angeles, representing companies and individuals in matters ranging from routine business cases to some Hollywood and entertainment stuff. We got Kurt Slichter on Indisputable. Kurt, good day. Dr. Richie, thank you for having me. I appreciate you stepping up and asking somebody who will dispute despite the the title of the show. Well, and listen, I, I'm looking I think forward it to takes it. a lot of courage to have somebody on who uh, uh, who doesn't agree with you. And I'm, I'm glad to be here. Man, listen, I'm glad to have you on the show. Uh, so here's what I want to do. I don't want to presume what you believe about um, gun rights and the second amendment of the US Constitution. So if you would give us some background as to your uh, belief structure, your value system as it relates to um, gun ownership in America. Well, it's very simple, Dr. Ritchie. Uh, The right to keep and bear arms is a natural right of all citizens. It has been for, uh, it's been recognized for uh, many centuries. The United States Constitution recognizes this pre existing right. Each individual has a God given right to possess the arms necessary to deter or, if necessary, defend themselves from crime or tyranny. And while the tyranny part has not really come into play in about 250 years, it doesn't mean it can't. It's very, very important. I I aggressively believe that every American citizen should have uh, taken upon themselves to uh, go and uh, possess effective weaponry so that they can protect themselves, their family, their community, and their constitution. Okay, let me ask you this. You called it, I think, a natural right, correct? Yes. Well, statutorily, it's an aged in right. Well, it's not statutory, it's constitutional. But the Constitution doesn't create rights. The government doesn't give us anything. It recognizes rights that we have. We have the right to speak freely because that's okay. how God made us. We have the right to All defend right. ourselves because that's how God made us. So, attorney, you're oh. going to get some pushback from me on that because okay. statutorily, you understand what I mean when I say that, that states are able to set age prerequisites or qualifiers in order for you to engage in the constitutional right to bear arms. You have, you have other rights that have statutory restrictions. So when you call it a natural right, one would presume that your definition of a natural right means that as soon as you are born, you inherit that right, which there are some rights you do inherit as soon as you are born without a statutory prerequisite or restriction. However, the right to bear arms, Attorney Kurt is not a natural right. It is, in fact, a statutory restriction to that right for age qualifiers and also other qualifiers, such as if you are a felon, you lose that right. If you are a person who has been red flagged for mental health in some jurisdictions, you lose that right. Don't you think that's common sense? Well, well, I, I think it's manifestly so. I think that uh, the, the rights of citizens, which include the right to vote, uh, the right to uh, you know own property, uh, all, all of them relate to age. So when you reach the age of majority, which is 18, you should have all the rights of a citizen. Beneath that, no, you, you sometimes lose those, you, you don't okay. have those rights. Uh, All right. does, it, does it mean you can be oppressed? Also, you can lose your rights. Through due process, mm-hmm. because you know you you've committed a crime, you suffer from a debilitating mental condition, uh, something like that. But the basic right, because this is one of the mistakes I see a lot, Dr. Ritchie, when we talk about rights, we don't focus on the right. We focus on the exceptions. You know, you talk about the uh, First Amendment freedom of speech, and inevitably it comes down to, well, what about yelling fire in a crowded theater, which is a terrible example, but that's the one everybody uses. Uh, I believe that we should talk about the right itself. The right is the ability of a citizen to defend himself, his family, his community, and his constitution. And frankly, I think it's more than a right, I think it's a duty. Okay, let me ask you this, you've mentioned age of majority. What's the age of majority? 18. Um, Based on whose statutory requirement? Well, it's in the constitution for voting. It's essentially common law. There may be some states where uh, certain rights. 
are, uh, uh, you know, uh, take effect earlier, for instance. That's incorrect. Just, just so you know, uh, Attorney Kurt, uh, age of majority is not in the US Constitution. It is left no, to be defined. No, it is not. Right, you said the Constitution. Uh, well, except, in the, except in the amendment that allows 18 year olds to vote. Now, so age of majority is a state statute. Some states still consider the age of majority to be 17, by the way. At one point, many states had it at 16. And back decades ago, they had it at 21. As a matter of fact, that was the legal prerequisite age in order to even vote in this democracy until people said, how in the hell can I go to fight for a country that I can't even vote in the democracy for? So they reconciled that issue. So my point to you is that age of majority is not constitutionally defined. And I'm going somewhere with this attorney. Okay. Age of majority is not defined by the Constitution. We say things like gun control, and I hate that terminology when common sense legislation must govern how we utilize all of our rights. Common sense legislation governs all of our rights because rights come with responsibilities. So when you say things like, age of majority, well, that's not constitutionally constructed. The framers of the Constitution did not say as soon as you're born, so it's not natural or, or innate in that sense. And they did not say when you turn 18. The states have been able to define and redefine statutorily what the age of majority means. You all accept that on face value without it being a constitutional prerequisite, without yeah. a constitutional mandate. But why do y'all get bent out of shape for other statutory elements that make common sense. Well, first, your, your your premise is off because the Constitution was basically assumed the English common law, and the English common law understood that people do not take their full rights as citizenship citizens till they reach the age of majority. And I look, I I I don't necessarily have an objection to lowering it. I do have an objection to raising it. And and the fact is, the states do have some authority to give certain rights earlier and or later, for instance, age of consent. Correct. Um, they don't have the right on voting. They do have the right on alcohol, but they don't use That's it because right, the correct. feds hold back highway funds. Now, how does this relate? How is the fact that you can say, hey, wait a minute, um, we, uh, uh, you know, we, 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 don't, we don't give uh, uh, seven year olds uh, rifles. Uh, that's that's very different from saying I'm not going to give a 25 year old a rifle. Look, I'm a former uh, battalion commander and acting brigade commander with two deployments, 27 years as a colonel, been a lawyer for 25 years. And yet the state of California says I am not qualified to decide when to carry the same weapon I carried in the service of our country uh, concealed. Now I can do that in most other states. Mm -hmm. uh, that is outrageous. We need to focus on the basic right and the parameters of the basic right rather than restricting it. Every right. American should have the right to keep weapons, keep well, they do. arms as those are defined. And I think the Heller decision does a very good uh, job of defining what arms are. Yeah, but they do. You do have the constitutional right to bear arms. Well, it wouldn't be, but if you're in, for instance, New York, I can't bear arms. I can't walk down the street with a uh, uh, a Beretta nine millimeter, like I carried overseas. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. It's not legal there. It is in Texas, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, it is in the states oh, where I have a gun. And, and let's do that. Do let's do that. And and once again, we're back to some statutory limitations to that right. But let's go to tax, Texas because Texas they did something really interesting. They said um, we're going to engage in constitutional carry. Yep. And constitutional carry says that basically what you're saying on my show, uh, once you reach age of majority. You have a constitutional right to carry the firearm or a firearm, or yes. you have the right to bear arms. Now, yes. that's interesting. Now, remember, this means you do not need a permit. Yes. You do not need a license. True. You do not. You do not need these qualifiers in order to exercise this, as you would call it, natural right. Absolutely. Uh, do you correct. agree? Do you agree with the Texas style of constitutional carry? Oh, I, I think that's in conformance with the Constitution. I think that's how it should be. Okay. But I do not think that people shouldn't be responsible for their actions. If you commit a crime while armed, if you are negligent while, while armed, just as if you do it while driving, you need to pay the uh, uh, tend to the consequences. Now, I probably oversaw 20,000 soldiers training on weapons in my career. I was an officer, so I was kind of in the background. I wasn't up front, but I. Uh, 
uh, you know, there is nobody on earth who are, is more insistent on weapon safety uh, than a uh, Second Amendment advocate. Yeah. And uh, because you can get hurt, guns are dangerous things. That's why they're necessary. You right, can't sir. misuse them. Yeah, Some let me ask will, you that. We we agree. Advice. We agree on that. If you misuse, if you abuse, okay. if you uh, engage in criminality, you you bear the responsibility. Now, you believe in constitutional carry, which yes. is basically the elimination of any other qualifier, such as a license or permit, in order to uh, engage in a right that the Constitution gave you. Now, let me yes. ask you this follow up question: uh, Do you believe voting is a right? Of course, for an American citizen who hasn't lost it because of conviction for a okay. felony in so a jurisdiction if, that chooses to do that. Gotcha, so if voting is a right, why don't you believe in constitutional voting? I do. Let me help you understand what I mean. Do you think that in order to exercise your right to vote, you need an ID? Yes. Do you think in order to exercise your right to carry well, well, on? Uh, you can, ah, no, 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 no. The state can impose a statute uh -uh. to do that. Kurt, it's constitutional Kurt, to yeah, have, you, have an ID. Yeah, Kurt, I you think it's good in policy. Now, uh -huh. You stepped into Kurt. Either you believe in the purism of the Constitution that says you have the right to bear arms without a prerequisite, a prequalifier, because the Constitution gave you that right. If you believe that right should be exercised by every citizen in the United States under the ideology of constitutional carry, why do you not believe in the same construct for constitutional voting? Because people cheat. People uh, cheat voting. People get convicted people, all the time. People commit for murder. Election fraud. No, people I, I, commit I, murder. I, I know where you're going, and I, I and I, I think it's an interesting argument. But it, it, you know, having an ID is not a barrier to voting. I have yet to meet a getting single a person permit who is said not I can't a get an ID. Getting a um, permit for a gun is not a barrier to exercising. No, your a right. permit is permission. A permit is permission. It is me. Got, I have to ask permission of the state of California to exercise my right. I don't have you to You don't ask think, Attorney Kurt, you don't think having an ID, having a registration process that can eliminate you from the voting ranks, having that kind of system is not also de facto permission in order no, to participate in democracy and exercise your constitutional right? Make the argument. It's not even close. How? Uh, exercising, look, the, the, the state has a right to clean up voter rolls and make sure that people who the are The state has a right to regulate who, who has a gun and who does not. The state has a right to regulate who has a gun and who does not. The state has a right to regulate well, the well, like, majority. I, I, I use the wrong word, it is not right, it is the power. Because all power is granted to the government. It doesn't, government has no rights. It has the ability, it has a power we grant it through the Constitution and through our elected representatives. It is not a misuse of a, a, a government power to clean up voter rolls or to ensure that you know John Smith is voting and John Smith is John right. Smith. Is it a misuse of government authority to create common sense legislation around gun reform policy in their state? Uh, I don't know, what's common sense gun, re gun policy? Well, at least I got you halfway there to be open well, to the I, conversation. I'm curious about it. Look, <laughs> uh, as the, as Let me read some. I'll decision, read some to you. There, there are some uh, traditional common law uh, limitations on uh, the exercise of the right. And I, th I think it's a mistake to focus on them whether the right itself. But uh, you know, when somebody says common sense, well, what, what's what's common sense? Are Let you going to tell me what to weapon I can and can't have? I think I'm a little well, more I think qualified that's part than of most it. folks. Your right to bear arms should not be your right to bear bazooka, in my opinion. But let me read some bazooka of the things that are- Bazooka's not an arms under Heller. Yeah, but let, let me read, well, hell, under Heller, uh, a knife is an arm. What are you talking about? A knife is an arm. Yeah, you should be so, able to carry so, a knife if you want. All right, so Attorney Kurt, let me, I only got a few minutes left, brother. Let me go to some of the common sense reforms, I think. Um, we should be able to agree on based on the sentiment of the common American. Well, let's 90, see. 96% of Americans support universal background checks for all gun purposes uh, and purchases. Are you okay with that? No, I don't believe in universal background checks. Okay. If I want right. to go get one, if I want to go buy a gun for my brother, yeah. I shouldn't have to uh, uh, prove my uh, that, that somehow I'm not a criminal. I got you. You're in the minority with that, and you don't have to prove that's you're not okay. a criminal. 
You can actually be a criminal and get a gun. They're just yes. certain offenses they do you all the time. Commit. That, that's correct. Now, 70, 77% want families to be able to request a red flag intervention. Now, these are families that have been verified as being victims of a particular individual, and they will have the authority through that prosecutor to request a red flag on that person temporarily. Do you agree or disagree with that? Uh, I, I, I think there needs to be a way for people who are clearly mentally ill uh, uh, to be uh, helped. And one of the ways you help them is keep them away from weapons. Okay. Uh, how that's done, I think you and I will agree that that has to be done uh, both with uh, uh, attention to due process, mm -hmm. uh, compassion, and insight. If it's a, if it's some sort of, uh, uh, you know, smokescreen designed to disarm people, I'm against it. If it is somebody who is a viable threat who has a chance to answer, because remember, you devastate a career if you take somebody's firearms. If you're in the military and you have a order against you holding firearms, your career is gone. What if somebody's mm -hmm. lying about you? What if uh, the facts are wrong? What if the whole story's not told? I want to hear the whole story, but I don't think it's un uh, unreasonable in theory. It's practice I'm worried about that we can use due process to take weapons away. We take weapons away from prisoners. Yeah, that's that, no one. No one disagrees with that. All right, seventy percent of Americans want the police to be able to request a red flag intervention. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, the police work for us. I have I have grave doubts about that. Okay. I I don't I don't think the police I don't think the government should go around telling people who can and can't have weapons. I think if uh, Well this is a temporary a, red flag, temporary. Yeah, well I, I think that's that's a problem. In fact they do disarm people by taking them into custody. If they have done something that has them being taken into custody I don't mind them being disarmed. Let me tell you what you and I probably more so fundamentally disagree. Um, when you talk about dynamics in our law like constitutional carry, you all focus so much on this um, second amendment dynamic that you do not uh, think about the other rights and how every right comes with a level of responsibility, thus a level of regulation. It is the gun rights that you all want to see have no regulation. Uh, there's a guy just reported on him today. This guy had over 50 weapons, some legal, some illegal. He had 15,000 rounds of ammunition. He had five pipe bombs. And if there was a registry, a registry, which I know you're against. If there was a registry, they would have caught this guy years ago. But the only reason this guy got caught is because somebody tipped off the local sheriff. And if it had not been for that one tip, people would be dead today. But that's not a silo, that's not a silo. That happens That happens across this country every single week. And we have, we have militia groups that are being organized that are truly uh, uh, white supremacy organizations hell bent on disrupting democracy and disrupting the American government. You don't oh, think gosh, we I, need I, this? I think I think the existence of uh, bigoted morons who want to hurt my family, which is not the same ethnicity I am, uh, you know, I I I I think that's a great argument for ensuring that I have the kind of uh, weaponry that I decide I need to protect my family, you know what's my, community, interesting? my constitution, and All my right. uh, uh, country. You know what's interesting about your argument? We have more ammunition than in the history of this country. We right. have more guns being owned by Perfect. people than in the history of this country. And we still have more people dying. No, we I, still I, have uh, more people being shot and killed than uh, in the history of this country. Now, it. now think about this attorney, if it worked, if, a, if the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is having a good guy with a gun, well obviously it ain't working. Because you got more guns than ever, you got more guys with guns than ever. You have more ammunition than in the history of this country, all in the hands of American citizens than ever before. You got all of these dynamics and you still have more people being killed oh, by oh, gun death than well, ever before. Well, Dr. Ritchie, you're talking about guns being the first line of defense, they're not. The first line of defense is, uh, uh, solid families training up their kids so they don't go down that path. Gotcha. The second line of defense is the police arresting career criminals who cause an outsized proportion of this stuff. I mean, most of the murders are uh, are, are gang related. Uh, they are people who've committed crimes before. That's it completely look, untrue. It, look, I, I, Those I murders are not that, sir, 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 so I won't let you do that on this anybody. show. Kurt, it's last I won't one. let you do that on this show. Most murders in America, are not gang related. Most, most murders, they are most not gang shootings related. Sir. Are gang are criminal related. 
Well, they're yeah. definitely criminal related, damn it, we know that. No, like robberies, whatever, okay. but they also involve gangs. All right, uh, I got, I'm got. i out of time, man, it was fun. Thank you, that Kurt, for being fun. on the show. All right, hope you come back. Yeah, I, I like working at a high level and answering uh, tough questions. Thank you, you very much, I appreciate yeah. you having me and being respectful. I hope Thank I had fun the same. Absolutely, thank you, attorney, I appreciate you. Thank you.